and it became about right. me because when you make the right choices and you start to feel better, right. you start thinking all those clear thoughts that Dude. everybody should have been thinking the whole time. Right. But when you're at a bad spot, it's just so there's just so too many clouds in the way. You don't even see it until yeah. you get there. And then you're like, how did I live like this? Right. And now like I'm back almost living like, I'm like, wow, it was, I don't it was, see what I saw then. It was always my fucking ego that would tell me like, dude, yeah. like it's okay to be comfortable, bro. Yeah. You work so fucking much. Yeah. You don't have to go to the gym. You're fine. Like, you mm. know what I mean? Mm. Fuck that. You know what I mean? It's a fucking liar, bro. Like, you know, yeah. you, you got to be honest with yourself. You know what I mean? So dude, I woke up, I'm like, came back from Atlantic City. We had a big party weekend. We we're there for like three, four days. Dude, we're at clubs. I'm 44. I shouldn't be at a fucking club. <laughs> like a a, yes, you should. Yeah, we were Jersey the Shore boys. was there. I'm yeah. like, dude, I definitely shouldn't were be Were they here. really there? Jersey Shore was, yeah. We were, uh, at, we were at Borgata at uh, Club Premier. I mean, it was really cool. Like, Borgata's really good. awesome, All our man. friends, our uh, birthdays and stuff. Like, it was really cool. I'm like, dude. I was that the Paulie D DJ Paulie D, show? Yeah, he's the, he's the Lu- resident DJ yeah. there now, yeah. Oh, so he's there regularly. Yeah, but that was his first like thing, and like all the Jersey Shore was there. Nice, mm. dude. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, was loose great. posted. I'm a closet fan. I'm, I'm like, yeah, they're, I'm a closet they're fan. honestly at DJ Paul. Oh, we Day, had a blast. Yeah, and I'm like, I feel so old. Like, I, yeah. dude, next time I want to go. Oh, dude, yeah, props amazing. to him, man. He turned that Jersey Shore thing into like he never stopped his gigs. Like he. <sighs> From the very first season, he, it, he used it as a promotion for his DJ stuff. Yeah, so great. if you look at their net worths, yeah. they're like five, 10 mil, five, 10, 40 mil yeah, because he, he spun it he into his career. He took that platform and just ran yeah. with it, man. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome. So and funny. He's, and he's actually really He's good actually a funny dude, too. Right, yeah. He's funny, but yeah. he's a really good DJ, too. Like some of these guys just kind of use like their popularity yeah. and, you know, spin some dumb shit. Like he, he killed it that night. You go to Gypsy great. Bar? Yeah, I like that I as a little like gypsy bar. That's, that's like vibe, a cool yeah. little spot. Yeah, that, that's my before you do Gaga. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I used to play there a lot, night. and that was Did my you? favorite. Yeah, yeah. That, that was like a good. That was always a cover band spot. They would have like a cover band start at seven, and then another one come on at eleven. So they had like just bands from like Philly area. Dude, we yeah. went there. It was the weirdest. Like, so there was like a dance. There was like somebody that owned a dance studio there with like a clash trip. Like, so they <sighs> were doing like the craziest dances to this this band like and it was just like it was a show it was like a show on the dance floor like, <laughs> like you a Cirque du Soleil because you would have I mean I'm a yeah. bad dancer anyway but man yeah. I'm like these guys are like professional dancers like throwing each other up in the air and catching each oh, other oh shit oh it was hilarious yeah. I it haven't been down in a while hilarious. but god I would love this summer definitely that's what's up Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we have a very, very uh, good friend, Frank Crenitti, in the house tonight. Yes, the sir. one and H. only Dave Frank Crenitti. applause like we talked about. The Thank you, my one friend. and only. What's up, Al? You had a great day, man. Had a great day. Uh, thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks for having me. This for those awesome, that don't know, dude. Frank uh, it works at Piazza Honda, has for a long time, and um, you're, you're a humble guy. We didn't, you know, I'm sure you're not going to spout out a whole bunch of statistics <laughs> and shit, but you're one of the top car salesmen in the country. Is that, is, is that still, no, I mean, listen, I'm humble. We got a chance to be number one in the world. My, my, so, you know, if you have a chance to be number one at something in the world and you don't take the opportunity and push it, then you're just, I mean, you, you, you just squandered a, a huge opportunity. So right now we have a chance to be number one. Oh. In the world of what we're doing. And I have a great team, man. Like Mary Ann, Justin, we got a new guy, Tyler. He's doing all our paperwork. It's just it's phenomenal, man. So it's driving me. It's pushing me. You know, even we're 23 years in. Whoa. And I'm still going strong, man. It's good. You're an incredibly driven guy. Yeah. Was that what you, you, did you start out in the industry and you stayed in and you just like focused on conquering it or what, how did you start? Nah, I mean, listen, I started 23 years ago. I'm like 21, 22. You know what I mean? And I did. I mean, it was a lot of long hours. You know, at first it's, it's, it's the, it's, it's, you're feeding like, you know, your, your ego, you know, you're being successful, you're dominating your dealership yeah. your industry. And then it's the money. Hey, you got to drive these fast, nice cars, you know, right. and all that stuff. And now it's just how many people can I serve? You know what I mean? How can we change the processes to make it, you know, yeah. super easy for everybody and fun. It's gotta be fun, man. Buying a car, it shouldn't stink. You know what I mean? So yeah. it should be actually fun to buy a car. You we have, have like, a lot of fun. Yeah. You have like uh developed, um, Things that only you do in the industry, I've noticed, and I um, people kind of watch you from, I guess, nationally and internationally. Just yeah. kind of th- like, kind of watch your process and like, yeah. kind of bringing people in as like family instead of just like somebody that's going to buy something from you. Yeah, man, it's, which it's, is what we notice, you know, watching. Yeah, we're, we're uh, we have a training uh, a training group, Pinnacle Society. We're, we're training people all over the world. So we have somebody as far as New Zealand. 
in our group. So yeah. shout out New Zealand, yeah. New Zealand. What's yes. up? Let's go New yeah, Zealand, on, New Zealand. So I've we got some hoagies of, there. I've seen a lot of your what you're doing recently. Yeah, and I'd like to build up to that. But how did everything get started? I mean, you were what 21 years old. You got into the car Jeez, business. How, how deep do you want to go? Uh, I mean, has <laughs> how, the, how far down the rabbit hole do you? Paul Croft, go? Yeah, 1977. Right. Right. Like well, listen, go, back you, when I was four years old, I'm, I'm mean, going door to door. My mom selling Avon, right? And I watched how she Avon. just developed like relationships with people. Like we didn't just sell Avon. We got invited in to, for, you know, coffee and donuts and like, you know, sat at their kitchen table and just hung out with their, their kids and their family. And then, you know, wrote up the orders and then, you know, I would deliver them a couple of days or a week or two later, you know? So my mom, like down that rabbit hole, if you want to go that deep was, you know, absolutely yeah. that definitely you know, lit that, the fire. That was, that was probably it, man. And then she, she read me this book all the time and gave me this book. It was like, it's the most phenomenal book. It's a highly, dude, I, I, you should give it to your kids. You should read it as an adult. Um, the little engine that could, you know what I mean? I think I can. I think I've heard of that. I think I can. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Mike's so, been working on that. You're almost finished. I'm almost that's, finished. That's actually it's been 40 years. That's actually my reading level still right now, but you know, it's great. Wow. It's great. So that that's, if you want to go all the way down deep. Like Hell yeah. Dude. In Falkreath, yeah. grew up in Falkreath. Dude, door to door, man. Yeah. Pink yeah. row Trade home. Trade Silville, shout out. Dude, yes. I grew up in the pink row home. Uh, not not the red brick home. There was Ooh. the pink row homes. Bro. From Collingdale, we're just a couple of towns away, but we knew it as the pink houses, old Falkreath, and the village. Right. Well, Collingdale just meant you weren't rich enough to live in Glen Olden and exactly, tough yeah. enough to live in Falkroft. That's all. Jesus, come on now. Hey, like, <laughs> I, I, I agree with it. Yeah. My age, Falkroft kids, you know, when because we had St. Joe's football and you guys never had football, yeah. but your team, you guys would come over to St. Joe's to play. Okay. And those kids that were my age, Eric Hennig, Matt Deanna, yeah. uh, Don Marmondeo, those kids would fucking, and we were tough Collingdale kids. Those kids were fucking pop. They, they would kill us, man. Yeah. Yeah, they were tough football players, dude. Super, super cheeseball dudes. Like yeah. next level. Well, there was the FVP. And I don't mean that in a bad way no, because we were the well, we were. Yeah. I mean, dude, that's just your pers- yeah, that's just I mean, your perspective. There was the mean? FVP. Pal- I remember yeah, that. Fallcroft Village Posse. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, we had our North Street Posse. Go. And when I say cheeseball, I don't mean corny. I just mean like they were like the super gangster, yeah. like yeah, I, yeah, I like the be. persona. You of had that. to play the whole role. You yeah, know? hell yeah, dude. Like we're like I feel like my friends. We were all dude. Rap music was fucking unbelievable at that time. Biggie. So the lifestyle was there, but like I feel like where we were like the funny ones. Right. Where we. We had the, the the sideways hats. We were like funny about it and yeah. rapping about no, we were it. Serious. Those dudes, were yeah, they were dead, dead serious. serious. Dead you serious. get fucking yeah. socked. Yeah, if things went south. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I felt a certain way going in the fog but it's really spawned. Like looking back, like from RAs people, like some like a lot of yeah. creative people, a lot of fucking go getters. Like Dude. you know, like what really, was it like growing really, up? Oh man, it was the greatest childhood in the history of childhoods. I mean, it really yeah. was like, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of money, but we, we never knew it. You know what I mean? Like yes. I never knew I was, I guess, poor, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we always had so much fun. Like we always were just outside playing all the time or coming up with stuff. And dude, I grew up like right behind the falls. So the falls were my backyard. So we had the falls, we had forts out back in the woods. We yeah. had a super track we call where everybody would hang out. And then later it would be like 14, 15, but where we go sneak all our, you know, 30 pack of Natty Light or yeah. we had Money Zima back then or, you Oof. know, our mad dog, you know, something like Oof. that. So, you know, it was a good time. Man. Your age group, was that Bonner or was it St. James still? Or what was the so kind I went of- to St. James. Oh, you were St. James? Okay. Yeah, so, I went to so it was James. before the break. It closed um, when I was there freshman year. Went to Bonner. Um, didn't exactly, Bonner wasn't St. James to me. So mm-hmm. I talked my parents into letting me go to Academy Park for- You couldn't cut is what we're saying. AP, ooh. It was, it was, it was different. It was a different lifestyle. I talked my parents and let me go to AP. That lasted a semester. So I, I talked my way back into Father Denny, got me back into <laughs> nice. Bonner. And then I graduated from Garner Valley senior year. So like, I'm not well, even this uh, so yeah, you're all over. I was just at everybody's party because I knew everybody from St. James, Bonner, Academy Park. Like, dude, right. I was at parties from Dixon's and Sharon Hill all Dixon's. the way up to like Duffers. Dixon's, baby. Duffers, Duffers and yeah. Glen Mills. Like, it, it didn't stop. You know what I mean? We were all over the place. What was the draw? Uh, at that point, were you, was your family out in Garnaby? Yeah, they moved uh, out there. Okay, yeah, at that yeah, point? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we sold the house in Falkland. That's funny. That's the exact opposite as my journey. I remember, like, uh, my dad was trying to get us ready to go to Academy Park. Right. And put us all we all went to public school for one year my sister started academy park yep. and we all went to ashland oh, middle yeah. and harris but we it was such a cool i we prayed i it was the only time i prayed in my life that year <laughs> and 
begged our parents to please can i go to bonner please can we go back to and jody's like fuck this i love academy park she yeah. at a ball at academy park the th the rest of us went back yeah. so we went to bonner and Prenny, but jody my sister graduated academy park but she was a lot tougher than us so yeah she it was, was the, yeah it was the opposite you know like he wanted to go to academy park and i prayed All to go my to bonner. friends that i was getting in trouble with were at academy park AP, so I'm yeah. Like, yeah i gotta get i gotta get there right you mm -hmm. know what i mean and then it's like yeah this just isn't not what I thought it was going to be. So, you know, so I saw a um, Falkroft legend this weekend at my gig. Who's Jimmy? Be more specific. Jimmy yeah. Fields. I nice. don't know the name. Mr. Fields from uh, the Field House. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the I know. Field the Fieldhouse Bar. Yeah, yeah. The, the Field House. House was great, man. The Field Jimmy House Fields. Mr. Like, Fields owned it. He was a great guy. We opened it like five in the morning, dude. So you can go in and get six packs. I think we were eighteen great. without fake IDs. Yeah, we yeah, would yeah, just go there IDs. regularly. Right. Uh, it's well, Saturday night. Let's go to the Field House. As long as you weren't a douche, they would just yeah. If you're friends with like Vito or something, you're allowed to get in. You have a bar across the street from the freaking police station, like you know what I mean? Yeah, hide in plain sight. Right. Like who's gonna who's gonna come in there? Yeah, yeah. That's ballsy. It's ballsy. They've got to be like, there's no way they would even try this. Right, right across the street from us and it's so funny like i had the I, I had the baby face growing up but i was the only one of our friends and i was like the youngest one to get served the cookies like i would go to cookies and get 40s like the guy loved me at the bar like you know it's because you're italian a, yeah, 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 like us irish know. guys growing up right. like we were so jealous of italians like look yeah. at you like you got to shave like you just yeah. look cooler your voices were deeper <laughs> earlier like yeah. irish guys had nothing just until saint patty's day every year until yeah. I, we were old enough to go to irish weekend yeah. that's the only thing that got celebrated and then after that it just sucks yeah, so, it just fucking blows. That. Yeah, <laughs> I've never dealt with that. But I remember yeah. cookies. Yeah, that was another great spot. Yeah, that was great. I think growing up in this, you know, the southern end of Delaware County, you know, it, yeah. it, it produces a lot of fighters like yourself and, uh, you know, go-getters in business. Um, what was your first job that you kind of used Dude, your so skills at now? my first job, right? So, I mean, we delivered papers and stuff for, you know, Shopper's Guide, but my first job was at Sperry Graphics. So it was everybody's first job in Falkroft. So I, we rode around on bikes, me and Pete Manzoni. Um, rode around Yo, on bikes. shout out Pete Manzoni. Pete Manzoni, what up, brother? Dude. Dude, we rode around on our bikes. He was my brother, man. I mean, you know, yeah. brother from another muddy. Literally, literally, we were together 24-7. Like, it was like we were inseparable. So we did everything together. So we jumped on our bikes. We rode up and down Chester Plake applying for jobs, tr Trieste. I mean, you name it. Somebody's like, dude, everybody in Falkroft starts at Sperry. So we get down to Sperry Graphic. You know, we talk to, uh, oh, man, what was the guy's name? I forget. But he's jacked. Like, he's sitting there, and we've we got to go talk to this dude. And Harry, he's smoking a cigarette, lifting weights in the back room. Like, yes. he's the manager. He's got dumbbells back there. I'm like, dude, who the fuck is this guy? With a heater. Right, right. So we're in there. We're like, yeah. He's like, you guys you guys normally drive around your bikes together getting jobs. I'm like, yeah, we're, we're just trying, man. We, want, we need to make some money. So he's like, all right. So he applied. He's like, when can you start? I'm like, dude, we can start now. So he's like, come back to Tomorrow. So we start. And he's like, you guys are friends. I'm going to put you guys together. You're putting together these binders. It was a plastics place. So there's three three or four pieces to this. Um, actually, it was pocket protectors. It wasn't binders. Oh. There's three pieces. There's the pocket protector. <laughs> yeah. There's a rivet. And then there's a clip. So you put the rivet in. You put the clip on. You put this little anvil and you, you hit it with a... All obsolete today. Right. So yeah. our quota was like... I don't know. It was like 600 or something like that between us on our shift, our four, six hour shift, whatever it was. Dude, we put together 2,200 of these things. Like we were in sync, like boom, 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 boom. I <laughs> yeah. put them together. Now, like it was great. The guy comes over. He's like, dude, you guys are going to freaking move up this company. He's cursing. He's smoking a cigarette. From him. He's like, this is fucking awesome. This is, dollar like, signs, this is like yeah. Tuesday. Thursday, he's yelling at the top of his fucking lungs. He's like, get in here. I'm like, oh man, what do we do? We got fired. They all fell apart. We put the fucking, <sighs> we put the rivet in backwards on every pocket <laughs> protector for three days. So we lasted three days at our job. Oh, fucking hell. We went, we went from number one producer in the company yeah. to get the fuck out of my place. To oh, doing them all great. backwards. Fuck. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, why did you do so many? To prove yourself, do five fifty and then sell him on. You can't do more than yeah, five fifty. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. kind of always been like that. Dude, we, is that no. always the way you were? Like, do let show more. Yeah, like, well, push me and the, Pete is, we push each other. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was, it was crazy, man. Like you know, he was, he was, you know, all pro athlete and everything, and I wasn't. You know what I mean? But he would always push me. Be at Ed Ryan's gym, lifting all the time. You know what I mean? Handsome dude too. He always looked like he was like thirty years old in high school. We'd catch the trolley together. And then lost track of him, had no idea what happened to him. Just yeah. remember from the trolley yep. heading home. And um, this was like 15 years ago, which would have been like... Oh, 2008. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. About 2008, yeah. 2009. Yeah. A friend of mine 
a friend of a friend is in California and sends a text San Diego? And, and goes, yeah. yes, dude. Yeah. And goes, yeah. hey. Yeah, he moved out there. It was, it was the Megan, Megan's friend, actually. She texts Megan and goes, hey, me and her boyfriend at the time, we're walking around in California and we see this guy kind of hobble up on a cane yeah. and we almost think he's going to like ask from, and we're trying to like avoid <laughs> eye contact. And finally he comes up to us and, and, and says, oh, yo, you guys from Philly? I guess she was wearing a Philly shirt yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Right? They're like, yeah. He goes, do you know Mike McGuire? No, no, no. <laughs> like, what is the fuck? Stop. Stop. What are you talking Diego. about? The legend. Yes, 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 the legend, Mike and McGuire. And she goes, Yeah. It's my it's my friend's boyfriend. He goes, yo, 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 let's get a picture together and send yeah. it to them. And I'm not going to spend time looking for it. But yeah, yeah I go, crazy. that's Pete Manzoni. That's crazy, man. I didn't even know him like that. I didn't really yeah. see him on the weekends. We would just hang at the trolley yeah, right, stop. Right. And, and, would get and you're the name more. he calls out in yep. San Diego. You're from Fucking Philadelphia. Do you know Mike <laughs> McGuire? Oh God, that's the first name he dropped. <laughs> yeah. He must have been hitting the head a couple times. Yeah. No, he's here. He's in Aston. Is he really? Yeah, he's got a nice piece of property over in Aston. Oh, shut up, Pete Manzoni. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, dude. So Crazy as ever. So I want to get back to, you were talking about the, the engine that could, yep. and then you got into your, your first job. Yep. So when you got into car sales, did you approach that with the determination or was it just kind of like, here's another gig, let's try this out, whatever? No. Or did so you get in and were you like determined to figure out the system? I was working for a company system? called, uh, it's called Green Mountain Energy. It was one of these um, buy appointment, like you set up like, you know, uh, with your family and stuff, you switched them over from your electric company. Yes. I, and <laughs> once you said it, I'm like, I, right. It I was like them. Yeah. this company vector knives came up with this like process. They used to go door to door selling knives to your family. The Cutco? The Cutco. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was the same thing. They give you a perspective. Yeah. Like, it goes through. And if you learn this perspective, like it's money. I mean, it's, it was a great sales tool. So I did like 122 presentations and I closed 120 of them. And the only two that I didn't close, because you start out with your family, your friends, get referrals from there, you build it up. The only two I couldn't close because it's a Y2K, right? Everybody's like, dude, I'm not signing. I'm going to change anything to Y2K. So remember all the computers? Right, yeah. yeah everyone thought the world was going to end. Yeah. to fry. Right. So I still remember those two freaking people that I wanted to go back close. But see- they screwed up and I screwed up because they made me district manager of Delaware County to give me this office over in media. And now I'm training like students and like college kids and everything. And like, I just couldn't figure out why they couldn't fucking get it. Like I did, you know what I mean? Mm. They didn't have the drive mm. and the passion. So it, it ended up being like, you know, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. My dad's like, why don't you go get into car sales? You love cars. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I opened the paper, found a job. I call I'm like, yo, you know, looking, looking maybe to get into car sales. The guy's like, yeah, come on out, blah, blah, blah. So actually he's like, no, the guy's like, he's like, why don't you come out today? I'm like, ah, oh, I already got a tea time. It's Friday. He goes, don't even fucking bother, buddy. Never mind. Yeah, he didn't like I that. The phone. I'm like, <laughs> I call back. I'm like, yo, bro, I mean, if you really need me to come in today, he's like, uh, yeah, we're trying to hire somebody today. I'm like, all right, I'll come down. So I went down and talked to the guy, started the next day, you know. And, Where's this uh, at? It, Piazza Honda was in. In Drexel Hills, you know, it was called Wright Honda back then. Mr. Right. Piazza still mm -hmm. owned it, but under a different name. And uh, the I Burnham started- Road there? Yeah. Burnham Town Township yep. Line? Burnham Township Line, yep. Started there March 21st mm. of 2000. And uh, well, sold 18 cars my first full month there, won the, the dealership and never looked back, just kept going. So. What's normal for somebody that's starting now? Uh, average car sales right now is, I think, about nine cars a month, you, you average, you know what I mean? Okay. So. And probably a little bit less for somebody that's completely green and just starting. Or, I mean, just the average, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's an Here's average. Here's what I always, uh, a question I always had. Do you have to, like you said, your dad said, you're in the cars. Do you have to kind of be like, in the car? Dude, I like, fucking hate cars. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> cars. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, don't, yeah. I sell more cars than almost anybody on the planet. I don't even own a car. Like, yeah. I drive a dealership <laughs> car. Great. I don't own a car. Like, I, I want to be driven everywhere if I can. You know yeah. what I mean? I strike it really rich. Like, dude, I'm going to have a freaking a driver or a self-driving car. Like, I just hate driving. It's, right. just, it's an inconvenience for me. You know what I mean? My like, old man's a car. Lines, yeah, my old man's a car guy, yeah. and I just never was a car guy. Like, yeah. I drive him until I crashed him. I mean, look, like, I got know. it out of my system. I've had, he crashes I've a, had lot. a bunch of yeah. fast cars. Yeah. I've had the Mercedes, the CL63s. The you know, Like, you name it. Like, the cars, like, they, you just shouldn't be driving that fast. I've had them all. And it was fun, but it's just, you know. To me, it just didn't matter. Like, I, I didn't care. I just as much fun on my BMX when I was a kid. It's so funny you know, that he, you said that because it's a lot like music. Like, yeah. people think, like, you've been doing that long, and they think Frank yeah. Randy Carr, like, he has to love them, right? Oh, yeah. Mike McGuire plays music. Mike Barker plays music. They, he has to love playing guitar every night. It's like, no, oh. it's like you, you fall in love with the hustle yeah, or something. Hustle, you got to reinvent the things. Of it. Yes. Like, I, I, I'm in love 
with the process that we have, because we have the greatest process in the in the industry by far. Like there's nowhere else in the world that you could actually understand everything you're doing, be very confident in what you're buying and be in and out in 45 minutes, maybe an hour if there's, you know, extenuating circumstances, but like, and people freaking love it. And your, yeah, your social media with the, you know, the, yeah. the thumbs up that you right. do, like, like that's caught on to where everyone knows that's your signature. Right. They hear your name. They know that they right. see that. That's practicing. Who's next? Pra practice. Who's yeah. Next? You know what I mean? Like, it's good. Like, dude, when do we do the thumb? Like got to sign everything. It's gotta be official. That's probably the most nerve wracking part yeah. of the process. Oh, yeah, going, oh I'm going to have to do this at the end of it. That's I don't want to fuck up. But listen, you're, you're never going to remember 99% of the shit that I said. You're never going to remember what you really signed or what you did, but you're always going to remember the way you feel when you're there and especially when you're leaving, right? So what better way to, to celebrate it and, you know, to, to have a good feeling when you leave, promote yeah. it on social media. Because, dude, everybody wants to, you know, show themselves off or have fun about it. They just don't know how to do it themselves. So I just do it for them. You know? right. We celebrate everybody for themselves. Who wants to leave, like, get, buying a car and then leave stressed out? Because right. maybe they you are. Because, you but still, they they, they just yeah. had a good time. They're like, yeah, you know, he made me feel good. Right. That's exactly what you just said. Like, people remember how they a person made them feel. Right. You know, right. people don't remember, like, in the end, like, oh, how much money this guy, like, how did you feel when you're with somebody? Right. So yeah. to take that into a business model, I mean, that's what... That's what that's sells. That's what our business model is. That's all it's about. And mm -hmm. I think when I think when we have a gig that kills, it's not like oh I was able to get in front of people. It's not that. No. It's facilitating the moment yeah. and adding to right. the atmosphere, and making feedback. Right. People yeah. Happy right. Remember, about. remember the Corona. I mean, dude, you guys, you got jumped on and you killed it. Like you made everybody feel good that there was something yeah, that was to cool look forward to. Yeah. You know I mean? And we were doing the live zooms, and, and nobody knew that. how that was going to turn out. It just was like kind of like okay, you know, thrown into it, but. Months later, people were like, yeah, you know, we really, the, the whole family was together. That was the coolest aspect that I found out months later is that like, yeah, we were there with our kids and not, like some of our teenage kids that would have not been home. We're all home kind of watching. I'm like, wow, it did become something you did as a community, which is cool, you know? Yeah. So after all, after all you've done and the records that you've set, I mean, you've set monthly records, annual records, et cetera. Right. How do you stay motivated? How, how do you not like... I mean, a lesser person, me. That's a good, great AKA question. Me, great question. Yeah, right. Um, I'd be like, I, I did it. Yeah, I'm good. Me too. How do you, how do you stay like fired up and how do you stay like on, on your game? Cause we're not, cause we're enough. not done yet. We're, we're not, not done, done yet. yet. Okay. Explain right. that. What's I the mentality? Mean, there's, there's always another level. Right. And, and to me, it's not about the trophy. It's not about the, the, how many cars we sold. It's, I mean, it's, it might sound cliche, but it's the journey. And the journey for me is, is the winning. Like I, I chase that win. Like, you know, I don't want to, you know, compare myself to a professional athlete, but it's the same thing. Like, I think you have to Michael Jordan or yeah. like, I mean, any professional athlete that wants to get better, isn't doing anything for the most part for the contract, right? Tom Brady wasn't between the lines for the contract. And when we're between the lines, like we're having fun, we're joking, we're light about everything, but we know what we need to do to get the, to get the job done. I mean, and, and my team is so focused on getting better and learning and, and, you know, wanting to push themselves. So, you know, that's what drives me. That's what drives it. And then training all these other salespeople in the country. Like we have a, a group called the Pinnacle Society. It's a top set of top set of salespeople in the country. So I get to not only train um, salespeople on what I did, my journey, what to do, what not to do, but I'm learning from them. And then me being able to go through and actually teach all this material and everything that I've done through my journey, it keeps pushing me because now I remember, like I get that feeling again. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, man, I remember when we sold 154 cars, you know, coming out of Corona. I mean, I outsold, um, I think there's 37 Honda dealerships in our zone. Um, I outsold all 37 of them coming out of Corona because we had a process as we an were, individual, as an individual you and your team, we were ready. Mm. We were ready yeah. for it. Like I already knew what was coming. I've been through cataclysmic events before 9-11, the tsunami in Japan, the, the, the collapse of the stock market, the housing market. So I already knew after that pullback, what was going to happen. And so we had our team ready and we were focused and man, we, we freaking crushed it. Like I was, I was down for about two weeks. The car, the car business shut down for like 60, 75 days, something like that. Two weeks into Corona, I couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, dude, I'm going to work. So I would sneak into work, I had all the lights off. I'd be in an office. I was, you know, yeah. getting things set up. I was sneaking cars to people. Like I was over in CVS Park, I'm like giving people cars, putting a tag on it. Yeah. Like, dude, I'll call you later and I'll let it sell up, but I can lend you a car yeah. for now. Like people need a car. I remember I mean? watching you on video, like yeah. up, uh, you woke up 
you know, first thing and you'd have your copy book out with names. Yes, right. Like, I, I remember you posted yeah, a video go, of that and yeah. I'm like, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, right. Just you go know, through all, everybody that, got, they, that tried to contact you in the last day or two and just write it down. Right. What's, go what it. stock do you put in being here? Like, could you have, like your success that you've had, <sighs> could you have picked up anywhere? Is it something special here? You being a popular guy in the community here, yes. or could you, could you pick it up and do it in, in Omaha? Or, yeah. So, or, yeah. Omaha. Yeah. We're we got, the same thing. Omaha. Yeah. We, we say that when we have to audible something. That's my boy, Anthony Lucy. Every time we got to, <laughs> yeah, every time yeah. we got to change Omaha. something. Omaha. Omaha. <laughs> Everybody knows it's time to Omaha. go. We got to move. We got to <laughs> move. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's a question I get asked in a lot of these car groups. Like, Hey man, like you're in Philly. Like everybody thinks, I'm in Philly. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're in this big metro area. What if we dropped you off in like, you know, you know, East Bumble, Texas or Oklahoma or something? Could you still be successful? And I say I'd be even more successful, right? Because I can make more noise in front of a room of 80 people, right? I can get to know everybody, know what they're doing, know what makes them tick, get mm -hmm. on a personal level with somebody. Then if I'm in a room of 5,000 people, it's going to be really hard unless I'm the only one speaking from a stage at that point. And in our industry, you're not. There's people all around you. There's noise all around you. Yeah. So um, there's ways to get in all these social media groups and local, um, you know, the mainline parenting sites and, you know, media, hometown, all these things now that – I could explode if you dropped me off in the middle of nowhere. When I was right. doing it to start, there wasn't. It was all shaking hands, kissing babies. I mean, look, I was out at every bar. You started before at, social media. Uh, yeah. So you were doing it, uh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. so by it, on foot. I would, say, I would over tip purposely yeah. every bartender mm -hmm. because, you know, bartenders talk to more people. I would switch my hairdresser up every couple months because I'd get to know all the hairdressers. I'd sell them all cars. Your hair is phenomenal, by the way. Our, our, one of yeah, the best heads of hair in Delaware County right there. He's the man. He's actually been cutting my hair since we were like 15. <laughs> Shout out, Rick. Out back of his house. One of Delco's best cuts right yeah, there. There you go, right? And yes. uh, Salvatore's, let's go, baby. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so yeah, I, I would I would love the challenge. You know what I mean? I seen uh, Grant Cardone did a thing from, uh, he started out and he had to make a million dollars on this like show that they put him in. And they started out with nothing. It was called like zero to millionaire. I forget what it was. And he did it because he's got the same drive. He knows business, right? He knows what to do. If I didn't know what to do and I was just bullshitting, then- no, I definitely probably wouldn't be able to do it. You know what I mean? But Delco definitely has a different flavor to their water than anywhere else, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, if you take care of Delco, Delco is chlorine. Take care of you. It's chlorine. Yeah, whatever. whatever it is. Yeah, whatever. That's gasoline, that's whatever's in the water. Fiji, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, <laughs> the bread's really good. So, yeah. It's really all, good. Yeah. yeah. But no, Del Delco is its own, its, own, uh, its own animal, man. You know, so, you know, I attribute a lot of my sex to. Um, to Delco, you know, so, yeah. you know, and that's, and I'm sure it's all, it's all perspective too, because you can say that, that doing this in Delco is an asset because it's such a tight knit area. Right. And you could say, if, if, if I'm living in East Bumblefuck, I could look at Frank Renetti and say, oh, well, he's living in this populous area right. where it's easy to reach everybody. Right. But on the other hand, it could be even more difficult right. because you could say, oh, well, it's very clicky. Right. And you can't infiltrate everyone. Everyone's got their own friend or whatever. Sure. Mm. So it's all, how much of your success would you attribute to mindset and not being, not leaning into like those angles? Well, there's only three things that I know that I can control, right? My, my mindset is, is one of the, one of the big ones. And then my actions, what I do every day and then my reaction. So how I react to situations or, you know, problems or people. So I, I, I look as problems as, as opportunities where a lot of people, their mindset will get buried in problem after problem, especially when you start to do huge numbers. Like, you know, I sell 100, 150 cars every month. There's a wave of things that happen, you know, tire pressure sensor, my, you know, whatever isn't going right on my car. My, my screen's blanked out. Like you could let that bury you where you could turn it around and spin it into a positive that I get to talk to another customer. I get to talk to them again. I get to touch base with them, make sure that the, you know, that, that they're, that's they mindset, all their car. Yeah, that's yep, bring it on mindset. and drop it off. I'll just lend your car. We'll get a fix. It's not a problem. No big deal. Right. And that's what you want to hear. So the way I attack every problem in my life, personally, professionally, everything is I always put myself in that person's position. And I always say to myself, what would I want done if I was in this person's position? Now it can't always work out that way, the mm -hmm. way that I want it. But at least I start everything off with that way. And we got a, we got a saying here at my, in my group, in my, um, in my team, if I say the word, no, 
the next word immediately has to be problem. No problem. Like we yeah. will figure it out. Like, like, we'll figure it out. You yeah. know? And, and like I said, it might not be your yes that you want, but you know, no problem. You know, we got that Jamaican mindset. No problem. Man. You know? <laughs> no problem. Man. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Where but, do you see the, the business in the future? Like, uh, you know, um, obviously COVID was tough, to, but to, to some people might've been a tough time, but you, 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 you pulled your bootstraps up and you, and you conquered that. Where do you see the business, the car business going in the next five, 10 years? Well, it wasn't a tough time. If you've seen it as an opportunity, a lot of people seen it as a problem. They stopped advertising. They stopped leaning into it. They didn't have a, a process that people wanted to buy a car. I mean, it changed business everywhere, right? I mean, when you, in, in a day and age where you can click online and I can have almost anything delivered by tomorrow at the latest, yeah. I mean, everybody wants transparency and just give it to them. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, why are people scared to give you numbers on anything? Like I, I've never bought anything without knowing how much it is. I mean, yeah. you know, like maybe a pencil or something like that, but nothing of any substance Value, I ever yeah. bought without knowing what it's going to cost me. So, you know, the, the number one question in my industry that people always say, or the number one um, rebuttal I should say is I have to go home and think about it. Well, what if I gave you all the information before you ever came in so you can talk to your spouse about it or somebody else has to make the decision and you can think about it before you ever before come, you in, come in, right? Mm. Then there's nothing to think about. I just need to make the process really smooth and make sure that I'm, you know, putting you in the right vehicle and everything's nice and good for you and it works out great. So I just reverse engineer as many processes as I possibly can yeah. and take all the bullshit out of it. And you, and that's not changing, you know, the, the, the process and like, the uh, process is always, evolving. always just going to be, oh yeah. Right. Again, our ego is the biggest liar, mm -hmm. right? Your ego would say you're at the top of the game. You're doing everything. You got it all right. You can just sit back and you're going to sell all these cars. You always have it's to reinvent bullshit. It's reinvent. Not, it's not even reinvent. It's just a tweak here, a tweak there. And then not being afraid to put yourself out there. A lot of people reach a level of success where they, you know, get promoted up through from sales, not just my industry, but they get to be a manager or a general manager or, you know, a managing partner or something like that. And they, they forget the things that made them successful. Right. So, you know, I, I never want to forget that. Like to me, it was, it was always my networking, my, my social media, you know, in the last decade or so. So, you know, as I grow, I want to just keep, pressing into it, right? I mean, remind mm -hmm. people that we have the best process in history, right? Not only mm -hmm. have the best product, we usually have the best price on everything yeah. and the best process. So you get all three, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's, that's kind of the key to the success. And you're so right about the ego. Like your ego will tell you like, oh, we oh. did the hard work then. Right. So we don't have to now. Right. And I know that, you know, that creeps into any business and like, yeah, it's right. so, it's so, it's very interesting because the same mindset kind of seeps it, to be successful in any business, music, car, real estate, you know, anything that you're into takes the same kind of mindset and same kind of like three, four things to kind of follow and you're successful in anything you do, you know? Yeah. And you've mentioned, you mentioned your team. So every time I lease a vehicle, yeah. I go see my buddy, Frank, Yeah, because the process is easy and right. it's, it's a nice excuse to say hello. Et sure. Cetera. Absolutely. Um, so you have a team. Yeah. I don't remember their names. So Marianne has been sent here by God. Shout out to organized. Shout out God. She, she is the best. Shout out God. Um, she <laughs> is way. freaking awesome. I walk in there's spreadsheets, color coded, like things that I, I hire out, like all my weaknesses. Like I, I accept and understand my weaknesses. And before I'd be like, Oh, I'm going to take this course on Excel. I'll figure this out. Fuck that. <laughs> right. I'm going to yeah. hide. I know what I'm good at. No, I yourself. know what I'm not good at. Know there's thyself. Certain, yeah. Right. And there's certain things I want to challenge myself to do. Like, Hey, I want to get the gym, you know, five times a week, but learning an Excel spreadsheet or something yeah. I just don't want to do. I don't want to do it. Right. Mm. So she's awesome. I got Justin. He's like buddy, the elf. Um, dude, he never says, Justin, yeah. he, he never says it's not my job. The guy always has a great attitude. He, he wants to help everybody. He's a genuinely one of the best people I've ever met. In He's got my the life. beard, right? He's got the beard. And he's yeah. always running. He's always like running. When, like after we shake hands and I'm ready to Dude, go, he's the one. He's ready to do you, go. Do you need me to show you how this radio yes. works, et cetera? That's he, just He's right? freaking amazing. Yes. He's yeah, he's great. And I got Tyler on my team now. Tyler is like 25. He's doing my Tyler. finance. Tyler, um, you know, he's, uh, he's learning the business really well. He's been in finance, I think like two years now, but you know, he's learning my process coming out, meeting the customer, not sitting in the back principal's office. You know what I mean? Hey, we're going to sign this paperwork and you know, some some angry guy back there, you know, yeah, what I mean? sign yeah. this, buy this, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I, I, we're doing things the way that I know is the right way. And I know the way that the business is going, you know what I mean? So, um, in the short, 
if you're not willing to change and you're not willing to change the ways that you do things in just about any industry, you're almost going to become obsolete at this point because, you know, I don't want to jump on this whole like AI conversation or not, but there's so much artificial intelligence is built into a lot of the marketing that a lot of car dealerships do right now. But look, I made myself an integral part of everybody's process in business, right? Like, just think about it. If you could text your lawyer right now and get an answer for a question you have, if you could text your accountant or your doctor and get an answer, well, you know, I'm that sales professional that somebody texts about their insurance, their car, their payment, you know, whatever it is, yeah. and I'm going to get back to you. And most people, when they leave the dealership, dude, they don't want to hear shit from anybody. So they don't treat it like it's their own business. And right. that's the way you really need to treat any business that you work at. Just because your name's not on the dealership, doesn't mean that you can't treat it like your own business. So is that where your team comes from? That's where I'm getting at. Like my dad sold cars for a few years and this is years ago. And when you started putting the numbers, I said, I know this guy, Frank, and he's doing this many cars a month. My dad's like impossible. Bullshit. I'm like, I'm not lying to you. He goes, no, there's no way to do that. Right. You have a team. Uh, then my a couple of days later, dad, 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 dad goes, I was well, asking around and, and, and he, he has a team that helps him. So, so is that, is that so, a Frank so, innovation? Or no. Is so, that- so here's, here's what it was. My ego. Okay. Now I talk a lot about ego, but it's the truth. My ego told me that I needed to hit this hundred number all by myself. Cause I knew of a couple of people that have done it with a sales team, meaning there was actually other people selling cars and getting reported like under one person's name, which is bullshit. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, really them selling those cars. So I needed to do it myself. And I did, and I did it for years. Like I hit a hundred for years myself, crushed it, crushed it, crushed it. I was killing myself. Like I'd have a lock guy pay to like do stuff on the side. I met a good friend, um, who's one of my business partners now, Ali Rita. And, you know, on a Saturday night, I called him and just like, dude, I'm like, dude, bro, I'm burnt, man. He's like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, Help. Yeah. Get help. Like, he's like, he's like, I got a team that works for me. Cause I got, I got a girl who does my finance. I have a guy that makes sure all my cars are gas and everything. I go, I know, but like I, I needed to get to this number by myself. He's like, all right, are you, are you good now? Is your ego? Okay. Like yeah. you got it. Right. <laughs> he goes, now why are you going to kill yourself? He goes, and you're making the process watered down for your customers and your clients. And that's one thing I never want to do. I always want to scale, but I don't want to scale where it hurts like the experience. Right. So I took yeah. Justin on. Um, he was a salesperson for a while, it just wasn't his thing. Took him on just the gas cars and stuff. And then like he'd be talking to customers when, you know, when I was real busy and people come over like, Man, that guy's really nice. And I'd watch him, I'm like, dude, like, you know, you have a good personality. So I'd kind of just put him as my go over cars type thing because that was one of the biggest things that I hated doing sell a car and then have to sit out there sometimes with somebody that just doesn't understand anything right, yeah, yeah. and keep going over it. But I have two people waiting. So I'd have to feel like I was rushed, you know, or push them off. And sure. I didn't want to do that. So he does all that for me. Marianne keeps me, she, her title changes daily. She's my social media manager. She's my everything. Like priest, right, rabbi. Right, exactly. <laughs> like whatever it has to be, she does, but she wants to grow too. She loves the experience. She loves, you know, that we push each other and everything. Um, and then Tyler just does the paperwork. I state of Pennsylvania, like this, the, there's a finance manager. So nobody else sells. I do all the selling for myself. I just, um, basically have my own team because it just, it makes it so much easier to compartmentalize it with one finance manager, having all the paperwork for me, one person getting everything organized and one person, you know, running around, making sure all the cars are taken care of and everything. And this way I can serve more people. So So it's your team. It's my team. It's your personal team. It's my personal team. The guy, Ali gave you that idea. Yeah. I mean, he had that model for a while and, uh, you know, through talking with him, like he, I'm like, dude, do you have people that like sell for you? And he's like, no. And, um, you know, he just, he broke it down for me. We were on the phone for like four and a half hours on a Saturday night. That's before we were really good friends. Like we just knew of each other and like over social media, you know, and talk back and front. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. He's from like Chicago or whatever. And he's one of the other top guys he in the country. Is the, and he, that's how you guys know each he's other. He's right? one of the greatest human beings I've ever met. Is that him? He's like, if you're yes. number two yeah. or three, he's yes. number one. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He's the man. How he did you, and when did you get to that point? Like in sales, like we've all heard that you kind of do, uh, um, online talks and all that. And then people kind of like go to see you talk because you're the, you're the guy that sells a hundred cars a month sure. all around the nation. Like yeah. when did that start? And like, how does that, how often so do you I do that? This, I, w- I was never a big like conference guy. I'm like, dude, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for it. I got invited to this thing called hustle and grime, which was 
um, you know, a bunch of salespeople and a bunch of people I knew from like social media, Facebook, uh, IG. I'm like, I'm like, all right, the guy's like, dude, like we, like everybody wants to hear from me. I'm like, all right, no problem. So I went down, it's like day three. He's like, dude, I'm saving you for last. Cause I want everybody to be there. I'm like, all right, I'm fucking, I'm last. Like what the fuck? <laughs> right. So like, you know, I get done, you know, going through like everything that's, you know, I've been through in my sales career, through building my business, through my battle with like, you know, cancer I started talking about because a lot of people just see me as like this like enigma of like a salesperson and not like a real human being, you know, and I've been through it all. I mean, you name it, I've been through it, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I wanted everybody to really know that. And there was about 300 people there. And when I got done, no exaggeration. There was a line of about 150 people, salespeople, managers, owners that wanted to take a picture of me. Like I felt like a Disney character and like, everybody's like, man, like we really need training. Like, you know, um, the only thing that like dealerships do is, you know, they, they, they only hire like these big, you know, firms to come in and they're not relative. They don't know social media. And they're I just not see, human. They're not mm-hmm. human. Like, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's all a lot of regurgitated bullshit yeah. from yeah, the nineties or like they've never done it. You know what I mean? So, um, it kind of spurred me into just trying to help salespeople, um, get to that next level. Cause there wasn't really much to, you know, join up or learn if you're an individual salesperson. It's like, Hey, here's these CDs, go listen to them right. from Grant Cardone from 1992. You know what I mean? Or somebody that, you know, hasn't sold cars in 20 years, you know, so, Nobody does it because there's no money in, in training individual salespeople. They want to sign big dealerships or dealer groups. But, you know, I, I felt a need to, to help. And, right. you know, it, it's, it's anybody who signed up with me that actually um, uh, put in the time, effort, and energy is absolutely crushing it right now through all this bullshit. So it is a repeatable system. Exactly. So what I do is, is it's, it's learnable. It's teachable and it's duplicatable because I've had not just me. So I'm not just this salesman that just gets it right. I'm not just this great, you know, yeah. wizard that can do it. Uh, it. It's, it's been duplicatable. I have, I have a woman, um, out in, uh, was she Alabama? I think I forget. I'll, Tracy, um, she was selling nine, 10 cars a month. She hit 54 her second year of training with me and yeah. it's a male dominated. All right, Tracy, industry. shout out Tracy. Shout out Tracy, yeah. right? And changed her whole lifestyle, changed her income level, her, you know, her, her mindset, wow. everything. And, you know, story after story after story, but, you know, it's duplicatable. So it's not that difficult. What, what, what Just was joking. the name of that, that, the, the place that you spoke was a hustle and, and grind. hustle and grind. It was down in Orlando. It was interestingly awesome. enough, Mike fronted a dance troupe called Grind and Hustle. Grind and Hustle, yeah, so totally different. Yeah. Clubs Great. in Manhattan yeah. in the nineties. Totally different uh, group, but completely Z, different same process. Z Cavaricci's on everybody. Oh, that's everybody. Well, when yeah. when the dance oh, started, that was a prerequisite. On. Yes. So if you are in the, if you are in this, the auto sales world. Mm-hmm. Is there like a sheet that comes out of leaders? Like how does how does somebody in Ohio know that you and, and guys like Ali are I mean, social, doing what you do? Social media. Just you know, a lot travels. of people a lot of people call bullshit on everything. And like mm-hmm. I'm like, listen, I've worked with hundreds of salespeople. Not every one of them like me. If it was bullshit, they'd be telling you it's bullshit. You know what I mean? Literally I, I sell every car. I shake every hand. I look everybody in the eye when they buy a car. Ask them, you know, did I do a great job for you? And every And how do you say, get yeah. that message out? Is that like a Patreon thing or do you travel? And do these things in her kind of, I don't want to travel. I want to be home for my family. You know okay. what I mean? Like, I don't want to be a sales trainer that's on the road 200 days a year. And with, you know, zoom and social sure. media, I mean, mm-hmm. we do a couple events a year, but, uh, you know, me, it's family first, man. I don't want to be on the road forever. Uh, I love, you know, hanging out with my kids. Like that's my, that's my passion. That's, you know, what we do. And, uh, you know, there's some sales trainers on the, on the road, you know, two, 300 days a year. And listen, they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars it's not my thing. Like, you know, I, I never want to do that. I never want to yeah. be on the road like that. But if I can help some people, if I can level you up in the industry, you know, to me, if I did this and I kept all the information to myself, I, it would just be the wrong way to do right. things, you know? Yeah. You give it back. You give it back and it comes back to you. Yeah. Me giving it back helps me keep leveling up because I remember, oh man, right. when I went from 40 to 50, this is how I did it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like getting in like a certain network of people yeah. or, you know, going and, and, and connecting with body shops and insurance agents and bartenders and hairdressers and get my name out there. And you forget that shit sometimes, right? right? Cause you get so busy and you're so caught up in what you're doing. But sharing what you've learned is like the most generous thing it, you can kind of get is, back. You know? yeah. and, and sharing what I learned, but it helps me. 
right? right? So it's beneficial to me. So not just like the sharing and it comes back to you, the sharing and shit actually I'm helps as me. I'm doing yeah. it, right? Actually I come in with these great ideas. Wallet. I'm like, yeah. man, we're changing up everything today. She's like, what sure. the, okay, let's go. <laughs> no worries. It's great. You know, we're changing the slogan. Yeah. We're changing <laughs> everything. Speaking of giving back, uh, yeah. Delco Group, yeah. you're also part of. Uh, yeah. When did you join that through? Uh, porting those guys, but you got in a few years back, right? Yeah, yeah, been been in since the beginning. Um, you know, John took me out, and he started to talk. We were, he took me golfing, and he started to started to talk on like the sixth hole, and I'm like, man, it's a little bit awkward. Like he's not an awkward guy, you know. And he just started. I'm like, I knew he had to ask me something. And he started talking. He's like, hey, I'm starting this. I'm like, I'm in. Yes. He's like, you didn't even hear what it is. I said, I don't care. I'm in. That's it. Let's go. Yeah. I said, now let's just finish the round. Yeah. Like, just okay, stop this awkward go. vibe. Yeah. yeah I'm in. Whatever go. it is. Whatever it is. I'm in. He's stu- in. Yeah. He's stuttering, looking away, like yeah, you're like yeah, a girl. Not, he's trying it's to court him. Either he's like, no, no, I got to tell you about this. I'm like, I know, dude. It's great. I'm in. Whatever it is. <laughs> great. And you guys yeah. do events all year round. Oh, like, it's pretty cool. It really is fun. We have fun doing it too. Like it's you know we get paid to throw parties. I mean, look, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff and stuff we got to get set up and stuff like that, but dude. It's fun. And we get to help people, man. We get to raise money and give money out and, you know, give people experience. Yeah. And it keeps you front, you know, you, yeah. you, you're there and everyone knows what you guys do. And, yeah. you know, it's got to, yeah, well, it all comes back. It's sick, you know, yeah, cyclical. I mean, if you're doing good things in the community, share it out. People are like, oh, why do you got to share that? Because if you don't, then how are people going to know, like, you know, to give to that charity or to support it or just share something positive out? Right. Like, yeah. There's so much bullshit out there, right? All day. There's so much, you know, mm. oh, this town and guns and, you know, and, and negative, and negative, all negative, negative, negative. Whenever you have a chance to share out some positive vibes, yeah, just do it, man. You know, just especially do it. around here where people get in right. ruts, like we all do, right. where it's just regurgitating negative right. shit. And if you can throw right. something out there, that's positive right. and inspiring. Yeah. And that's yes. what it is. So you've been in the game for 20 years now. Yep. Do we see 20 more years? What's what's the Ooh. ultimate what's the ultimate goal? Because you keep talking about leveling up. Is there how much a higher can you, that you shoot for? Yeah. Well, where, where I, I, are you I, finally? I, where do yeah, you I go? Mean, I keep where does Frank Kennedy go? So, like we keep growing. I mean, I come in about eleven. I get all my personal stuff done, gym, everything I need to get bills paid. You know, um, other businesses that I have going on, all done before I get there. So I get there usually around 10, 30, 11. If I need to get in earlier, I, I will. Mary Ann will let me know that hey, we have an appointment or you got to be in and. Man, I'm out of there at like 6.30 every day, Monday through Whole Thursday. Day. And then Saturday, we go in and crush it. I think I sold 12 cars on Saturday. I was out of there by 3.30, 4 o'clock. You know what I mean? So um, you don't have to, once you get the machine rolling, be in the car industry for you know 70 hours a right, week. Right, because it's already rolling downhill. It's already rolling. Yeah, you, so yes. if you can change the way you do things for a few years, right, and just tell yourself what that goal is, and a lot of people don't know what their goal is. They don't know what motivates them. They don't, you know, have any bar. I mean, you got to make a you got to make a a deal with yourself, right? And I made a deal with myself when I hit a hundred cars that I was going to stop working my days off, and I did. And we have Frankless Fridays, right? I made that deal with myself. I'm Frankless like, I'm not, Fridays. I'm great. not going to fucking do it. I'm not marking on his days off. <laughs> right. I'm not. I'm not working Fridays anymore. <laughs> yeah, my work's going to love it's Mikeless Monday. <laughs> You You've been doing like, that dude, for you're forty gonna, years. You're gonna need, yeah, you're gonna need more <laughs> than a uh, tagline, right? You know, so if you make the deal with yourself and you get to the level that you want, and you get the machine rolling, and you do things the right way, and then you share it with the community and actually show them what you're doing, you can actually pull back and keep growing. You know, so mm-hmm. I mean, it's very rare that I'll work forty hours in a week at the dealership. I mean, I'm always open. We got the phone. I mean, mm. I'm texting six o'clock in the morning. My phone's phone lines are open. Know, phone lines are open 24 seven. You know what I mean? If you need me, I'm always there. I've been giving my number out forever. You know what I mean? Since I've had this number 484 368 9000, everybody thinks it's the dealership number. And that's I your cell. It's not, it's my cell, you know? So, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's good, man. Is there, is there a, a, um, a milestone in the car sales business that is considered untouchable the same way like a batting average of 400 in a season was considered untouchable or 70 like, home runs. Yeah, like is Ricky like Henderson stealing bases, like no one's doing that. cars in a month. Is there any kind of number that's like so seen? My, my number's 200 a month. I want to get to 200 a month. Okay. Um, Jesus Christ, dude. We're, we're built right now for about 150 for the team that I have. To get to 200, um, we're going to level up. I mean, there'll be another person that I put on the staff um, you know, to, to help process everything, to keep the process the same. Like you don't want to, like I said, you don't want to water down the process just right. to be more successful because then you, 
you, you kill everything, right? Yeah. It's you like have to the, scale up to maintain the integrity of the process. Right. That's it's like, become it's like yeah. when Coke came out with new Coke. Yeah, right. Like, you yeah. Know, who the fuck wants that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be the same thing, you know? Basically, what you're saying, you're definitely a goal guy. Like, you, you need goals. You know, some people, and I'm I think a, it's I'm important to win. I just yeah. want to win. You want to win. Right? It's not about the trophy. It's not about the award. It's not about the money. The money is a byproduct of your success, right? Mm -hmm. If you're winning, if you're doing things the right way, um, the money's going to come. So I never worry about the money. Like, it's just, it's not a driving factor at all. Just like a professional athlete, they're, they're not, you know, for the most part, worried about their next contract, they should be worried about, you know, doing what it takes game, to get their, off yeah. of that next contract. Right. So that, that's what we do every day. So, you know, it's not necessarily, Hey, if I don't get to 200 cars, um, it's not a win. If I keep doing things and it's successful and Hey, one of my kids wants to jump in, you know, and train them, um, to, to take over the business. Um, that, that would be the, that would be the end goal, the ultimate you know, end goal, the ultimate goal, yes. you know, but, Frank's, we'll fans. Frank's, Frank's fans, Frank's fans, Frank's fans, hashtag Frank's Zeus kid next. Yes. So, so we got a pretty cool thing, um, coming up and I'll, yeah, I'll, please I'll, share I'll drop, with I'll share drop with it. So, um, I got a new logo made up with my thumb and <laughs> it's, it's, uh, we're going to, we're going to give away 10 tattoos of my logo and we're going to give away a thousand dollars to one of the people that get it. So we don't know yet how we're going to do it. If it's the most 10% cool, chance, if it's the coolest place that you put it or, you know, we oh. just randomly pick a number out or something like that. That's right. But we're going to give 10 free tattoos away. We're going to have a tattoo artist. Marianne's got a tattoo artist going to come into the dealership. We're going to give away 10 free tattoos of my logo. So we're going to see who's Frank's biggest fans are. Wow. Mike was thinking about a Prince Albert with the thumb charm right hanging there off in the, the front. There, there you go. Right there. Off, right there. Off, off, that's off it. The dome. Dude, you just—it's uh, a, it's a big thumb. You just too, perked man. everybody's it's, ears it's, up it's from Marcus Hook and Falkroft. Right. <laughs> fucking free tattoos. Hell yeah! Right, free man. tattoos <laughs> and a chance to win a thousand dollars. Like, yes. come on, man. That's, that's exciting. <laughs> who else stuff. is? Who else is? No one else like that. Nobody else is. Just right. That's exciting stuff. Yo, we want to. We want to thank our guest tonight, Frank Crinity at Piazza Honda. You want to drop your number one more time? Great fucking four eight four three six eight nine thousand four eight four three six eight nine zero zero this before yeah. Great. so everybody out there yeah. if you um if you've dealt with frank before i'm sure you know how uh, easy the process is um we, we spent some time with him today he's outlined all that stuff for you for us and if you haven't already dealt with him yeah please Let's drop go. him give him a call shoot him a text Let's give go. him and his team a visit right. tell tell him hoagie time sent you there you go yes guys thanks so much frank Thank thanks you. so Appreciate much for being it. on yes, with us man. tonight you guys are awesome.